Hey everyone, it's Joanne Molinaro, the Korean vegan, and today I'm going to show you how to make this creamy zucchini spaghetti. It's actually inspired by a classic Italian recipe called spaghetti alla nerano. So you can find the full written recipe in the description below as well as in the subtitles. I'll be posting an instructional video in the next couple of days. Today, I actually wanted to talk about my run this morning. So I went running, uh, I think at around like 7.30 in the morning, just four miles, and it was a really cold, damp, unfriendly day. And here in Chicago, it's been pretty crappy weather for the past month for running. There's a lot of ice on the road, there's a lot of salt, there's a lot of snow, and I always feel like if I'm not being very careful, I might slip and fall and break my legs. But it occurred to me while I was running today that, wow, I've been doing this running thing now for a really long time. I actually started running in about 2013, so that's going on almost eight years now. And the funny thing about it is I used to hate running. And I used to be one of those who would say, you're never going to find me running because I hated it. In fact, when I was about 10, I would say 12 years old, I was in sixth grade. And the bane of my existence was running around the track in gym class. I found out during third period biology that for gym that afternoon, we would be running 20 minutes in a row. And I had a full blown panic attack. So when Joanne has a panic attack, most people, they start hyperventilating, they start to get hysterical, they get really loud. I'm the opposite. When I start having a panic attack, I start internalizing that panic and I get very, very quiet. And that's exactly what happened. By the time we got to fourth period woodshop, I wasn't speaking. And within 15 minutes of fourth period woodshop, I actually fainted from shock. The paramedics had to come, they had to cart me out on a stretcher, I had to get hooked up to an IV, I had to wear a heart monitor for the next week because my pediatrician thought that I might have a heart condition. All because I didn't want to run for 20 minutes. And here's the kick of it, yeah, I got out of gym class that day, but the week after, we had to run 20 minutes. And I muddled through it somehow. So then what got me into running? Well, this is me in 2010. On paper, I had everything going for me. I was working at a great law firm, married my college sweetheart. We just bought a house with a two car garage. I had a refrigerator stocked full of all my favorite fizzy drinks. And my parents were so proud of me. But on the inside, again, I was quietly panicking every day. I was so worried that the penny would eventually drop and that I would be revealed as the imposter that I was and I would end up failing my parents, I would end up failing my husband, and I would end up disappointing my colleagues. So I was working around the clock, not just because I was a lawyer, but because I wanted to continue to prop up what I thought was a complete disguise. It was exhausting. I was getting very little sleep. I was getting zero exercise and dinner consisted of the vending machine on our reception floor or fast food at the McDonald's around the corner from our house. In 2013, I did something that radically changed the course of my life. No, I didn't quit my job, but I did end up getting a divorce. I moved out of our 2,400 square foot house in the suburbs and moved into a tiny little apartment in the city but the apartment was actually located very close to Lake Michigan. So Chicago is blessed with this amazing lakefront path, which consists of almost 20 miles all the way around of uninterrupted running path right along the lake. And I happen to live just a couple blocks from it. And so in addition to deciding to try and cook some of my own meals, eat a little bit healthier, I decided that it was time to get more physically active. And what better way to do that than to just throw on a pair of running shoes, put on some sweats and a t-shirt and go running. My inaugural run consisted of three quarters of a mile and I had to stop halfway for a walking break. 
And when I actually went back to look at my watch, it ended up being about a 14 minute mile pace. Mind you, I didn't even run the whole mile. <laughs> But I was so proud of myself because I knew I hated running and I knew I hadn't been physically active for a really, really long time. And I just didn't care that everyone on the path could run faster than me or longer than me or even looked better doing it. I didn't care. I just knew that this was important to me. So I continued to do it about three times a week. And yeah, each time I ended up taking a walk break halfway through. Until a couple weeks into doing that, I was able to run the full three quarters of a mile without taking a walking break. And once I did that, I decided, well, maybe I can run a whole mile without walking in between. And I surprised myself by doing just that. And once I was able to run an entire mile without walking, I pushed it to two miles. And then I pushed it to three. So on the lakefront path, there is this lighthouse on North Avenue. And it happened to be just about two miles from my apartment. And I remember every run, I would look at it as if <laughs> it was a mirage. And then every time I finally made it there, I'd stop and I'd take a picture. And it was oftentimes so beautiful. And then I'd turn back around and head home. That was my four mile long run on the weekends. I think the big turning point for me was when I ran my first 5K. It was my first race ever. It was a turkey trot here in Chicago on Thanksgiving morning. And there's something quite special about lacing up, pinning your running bib with your number on it onto your t-shirt, and then getting out there at God knows, 5.30 in the morning with the rest of the community huddling up with that sense of nervous but excited energy. Like, do we all really want to do this on Thanksgiving morning? Hell yeah. Yeah, we do. It's going to be fun. Starting gun goes off. You run past the start line and the air is so crisp. You can hear people's footsteps all around you. People's chatter, a little bit of music coming from someone's AirPods. And of course, the cheers from the crowd. I remember passing my brother and my sister-in-law and they were whooping for me because again, it was my first race. And then you finally cross that finish line and you feel like you've just accomplished something you never dreamed you could. Like you're literally on top of Mount Everest. It doesn't matter whether you've run three miles, 13 miles, 30 miles. That feeling once you pass the finish line is almost always the same. And I knew after that, that I wanted to feel it again. So I signed up for my next race, which was the Shamrock Shuffle, an 8K here in Chicago. And then I signed up for um, my first 10 mile race, which was the Soldier Field race. And then once I'd done 10 miles, I knew that I could probably do a half marathon. So I signed up for the Naperville half and I spent the entire summer training for my very first half marathon. And it was grueling it was nerve-wracking and there were many times where i thought to myself what the hell am i doing how the heck am i going to run 13 miles in a row i invited my entire family my mom my dad my cousins my aunt and of course my then boyfriend anthony to cheer for me on the sidelines and I remember at mile 10, it was touch and go. I really thought that my leg was gonna go numb and that I would have to pull out, but I muscled through it and I ended up running right into my mother's arms at the finish. And even as I sit here today and tell you all about that time I ran my first half marathon, I think it's sort of unbelievable that that girl from 2013 who couldn't even run a full mile without stopping, one day, ran a half marathon. I love sharing my running story because I want people to know that I was just like you guys. Didn't think that I could ever run more than a mile, let alone three miles, let alone six, and ultimately a half marathon, which is 13.1 miles. If you had told me in 2013 that in just a few years, I would be crossing the finish line of a half marathon, I would have thought you were absolutely nuts. But that's the thing, is sometimes you can be nuts, and you should. 
And it was crossing that finish line that ultimately let me believe that maybe, just maybe, I could be crazy enough to run a full marathon. You want to know if I did it? Well, you're just going to have to watch and find out. Well, what better dish to pair with a running story than pasta? Over the years, I've been eating many, many bowls of pasta, and they have fueled me on many, many runs. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on future Korean vegan videos. Have a lovely day.